Hi guys, before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm publishing a new book. It's called Ruck Me, and it's coming this autumn. If you liked What a Flanker, then you're going to love this. It will be available in hardback, ebook, and audiobook, read by yours truly, of course. If you want to get your hands on a signed copy, then head over to waterstones.com and pre order while stocks last. Thank you for all your support. Now back to your regular programming. Hi everyone, I'm Jace Haskell and welcome to What A Flanker, the podcast series two. My guest today is a former teammate, a friend of mine and a professional rugby player for Harlequins. He has over 60 caps for England, is the author of Loosehead Confessions of an Unprofessional Rugby Player. It's of course Joseph William George Marla. <laughs> we, we haven't started laughing already. What's wrong now? I can't take you seriously. Why? Because I did the whole like, radio presenting voice. No, not that. Oh. It's just funny like that you say that we were teammates. I thought you were funny that we said we were mates. I thought that's the bit you were going to pick Did up Did you on. say that bit? I said we were friends. No, you need, is Gar- you need to ke- take that out. What, or rewind re-record. it and say? I did wonder if I should have said that. People, someone I, I used to know yeah. and still know vaguely. An associate. A former work colleague that I've decided to get on and shine the light on today. Because what a flanker shines lights on people. With. Much better. Like that? Thank you, James. I was... let's, let's be serious, shall we? Thank you, James, for having me on. Thank you. I feel really welcome... Thanks. Fine. <laughs> this is going well. This is going so well. I got to say that I've got a lovely guy who works for um, Harper Collins. who does stuff for me. A guy called Orlando. Um, and when we walked in the door, you've come into this this building, Spiritland, like a whirlwind. I haven't seen you for a while. Very excitable. And you've gone straight away, going, "You don't look like an Orlando, right?" And I've obviously my ears are pricked up because I've never asked Orlando what is what what why he's called Orlando. I just let it go. And it turns out that there's a long story about it. His name isn't even Orlando, it's actually Lawrence. And you rightly pointed out that I don't appear to give a shit about anyone else but myself. No, that's not true. I I take that back. Okay. You do you do clearly give a shit about people. Okay. You often give off the impression that you don't though. Yes. Um but I know deep down having got to know you a bit better. So we are friends. No. Okay. Behave. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And it was just just the fact that he said, hi, I'm Orlando. I said, oh, really? Because I know that's like stereotype and stuff like that, but he didn't look like an Orlando. No, he doesn't and I was more Orlando. interested to be like, oh, where's that come from then? Like, give me a little bit of yours. Yeah. I like people, believe it or not. I've gone from really hating people, a lot, a lot like hating them, right. wanting to avoid them completely, to actually wanting to get to know them all. And so we're talking to a new Joe Marler today, so like a people-friendly Joe Marler. No. It's oh. the same me. Fine, but you just but you, but you know you like people. Mm, well, I don't li- I don't like everyone. Okay, there's, obviously there's still I'm, I'm more inclined to try and give people a bit more of a chance. <laughs> 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 so I try and keep it a straight face. Okay, ah. fine. Well, look. Um, firstly, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Now we've done some things together before on, in with an old podcast we've done. You've obviously got your own podcast, your own book we talked about. Um, I want to go delve a little bit deeper because we could just chat shit at each other for an hour but obviously you've been very outspoken about some of the mental health issues that you've been going through and I kind of want to talk to you about them today because I want to know how I could have played next to someone and a teammate for so long who was struggling as much as as you were you know you said in your book you know you were sitting in a car in tears on the way to, to training and I never picked up on that so I mean I suppose we'd better start really from the beginning like how, how are you how's lockdown been I mean obviously you've been playing a bit through that. How could I possibly divulge any of what I was going through when you were mainly the cause, James? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the best bit is? You actually turned up with a clipboard with notes. I have. And I wondered if that Sorry. is... Like, Sorry, that is, a... is this not one of those things where you're going to tell me that I've caused everything and like point one, you said this on point a Tuesday. Point one, Jack, I need to get this off my chest. Point one, Pask. Always thought he was a bit of a twat until I got to know him. Then instead of thinking he was a bit of a twat, I knew 100% he was a massive twat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it says on the clipboard. That's uh, that's my notes I made Fine. on the way here. Okay, but can, no. we just, can we just clear up the fact that I wasn't the cause of your mental health issues? No, of course you weren't. Or did I, add a, I probably added a bit of it. I, I think spending any sort of time with me gives people mental health issues, but not, not as bad as you had. It. No, I, I think you, you now give me happiness and joy okay, and elation whenever I see videos of you, which is approximately every fucking 30 seconds. 
because you're everywhere. I am. You're shamelessly everywhere. I, I am. I, I mean, I don't know if you can make jokes, but, but I'm like COVID. I just pop up everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can make jokes. Does it matter? No. You don't care whether don't you can or can't. Don't give a shit. Someone actually described me, I said it in the book, as the international equivalent of an unflushable turd. So let, if we don't use the COVID analogy, let's go with the fact because you can't, I just keep bobbing back up. Who described you as that? I think it was a journalist. <laughs> I think it was the journalist Good. who basically described it. It might have been a fan, um, either one of them. I mean, someone described the, the, the biggest problem with uh, Eng, uh, English rugby can be summed up in two words, and I scrolled down, it was James Hasbro. No. Yeah, yeah. That's a shame. It's harsh, that, isn't it? Don't worry about it. You're over it now. Look at, look at where you are now. Um, back to the point on why, how you can understand why someone's so, a teammate struggling and you not yeah. knowing about it. Well, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, mate. I didn't know how to reach out. I didn't know who to reach out to. Um, I had no knowledge of why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And in terms of a rugby environment, and I guess a working environment as well, you don't want to burden... I didn't want to burden any of you lot with my bullshit that was going on. Everyone's got stuff going on. Yeah. Why do you then have to try and pick up... You know, And also, I didn't want to detract away from the energy that's needed to play international rugby because you need to fucking be on it. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do was, look, mate, I, did, I detracted a hell of a lot from the <laughs> environment as it was. You know, the old sappuccinos in the fucking bars. That, oh, lads, come over with some biscuits slash putting the fucking world to rights yeah. slash... But that's part of making the world go round, though. I'm a big fan yeah, of Yeah, of sappuccino. course. There's a difference between sapping the life out of a situation yeah. and there's, there's sapping that gives energy yes. or just talking real about something. And so, we all have a laugh and a, and a joke with it. So but, you're talking but, about you undermining the foundations of the whole, <laughs> the whole enterprise. No, You'd burrowed underneath no, the whole no, thing. No, 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 I didn't do a James. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not a, <laughs> I didn't do a James to fucking fine. take down the man. Okay, fine. Um, and I guess, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel uh, at that point when we were, when we were teammates and a lot of my other teammates that I could, confide in I couldn't confide in my wife mate I couldn't confide in my best mates let alone my teammates um I just didn't want to put that on them because I and ultimately the answer is I didn't know what the fuck was going on um and it wasn't until um uh, 2018 uh which which time was it that I retired fucking hell <laughs> <laughs> you've had more comebacks than Tom Jones I've never seen anything like it it's ridiculous. I remember Faz saying, I think it was the second time I came back, and he went, um, we were at the Lensbury for training camp, we sat down with food. He went, oh, all right, mate. I went, yeah, 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 cheers. He went, fucking hell. Because it was my birthday, that was it. And he said, how old are you? I said, oh, I'm 29. Fucking 29? I mean, what's you cheeky sod, what do you mean? He fucking hell, mate. Um, you look fucking old. I went, do I? It was like, cheeky fuck. He said, well, I'm sorry, mate. Sorry, you've also retired about fucking 20 <laughs> times, so forgive me for thinking that you're fucking 40. Um, but it was this, yeah, it was 2018, and uh, I speak about it in the book that I had a fucking meltdown, and it all started over a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, right, did. explain, it, explain it, it did. Me and my Mrs. Daisy, we were going out... Um, because this is this the one where at home we turn the house upside yeah, yeah, down yeah, with your yeah, face, yeah, yeah. please. So yeah. this was the, the the camel that broke the f- straws back. Is that it? No, it's the other way around. But carry on. Yeah, it was the cam- well, straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, well, this camel he climbed on another camel, right, and he broke its back. That would happen, and it wasn't for sexual purposes. Fine. They were wrestling. So yeah. you imagine you were a camel mm-hmm. and I was a camel. Yeah, I can imagine that. Well, actually, my, my, you often take the piss out of my hump. Actually, you do actually which have a is, hump. But by all accounts, mine's natural. Should we talk about your humps? I don't know. Oh, what? My spot's on my back? No. Oh, I don't have a hump. Do I have a hump? That was a fucking steroid gag. Come on. Don't no, I know that. But then I was thinking, do I don't have a hump? Gareth, I'm, I'm, take that bit out. He's, I, I, ru- he's I, ruined the gag. Oi. He's ruined the gag. I'm so don't natural. Stop tensing Sorry. your arms at me. Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking about you and me wrestling naked on top of those camels. I, can't, I couldn't get my head around it. No, no. We are the camels. Right. Fine. Right. We're not wrestling camels naked. <laughs> anyway, we're going, uh, going out for our mate's 30th birthday. And uh, just dropped the kids off. 
As in, yeah, we both hadn't done a joint that's poo. What I thought. Thank I you. Thought you look at me like I'm yeah. doing joint turf. But how did you read that? Because I didn't say anything. How did you know that my mind had gone straight to that? Your eyes, I can just see him. You're like, because you know, people is. can hit. My wife <laughs> reckons that she can hear with the way I breathe. She knows a shit joke's coming next. <laughs> just, just <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I just, I need to say this joke out loud. Yeah, I've got to resist because I'm how trying it is. to be serious. Well, I don't resist. That's why I mostly spent my career in trouble. <laughs> anyway, carry on. And, um, on the way back, I a squirrel ran out in front of the car, and I didn't, I didn't move out the way for it. I just carried on. I didn't speed up. <laughs> I wasn't attempting to kill this squirrel. Accidents happen. However, my wife didn't agree with the way I I was driving. She said you should have swerved for that, or you know. Well, you know they actually tell you when you're doing. You shouldn't doing, swerve. Should not swerve. You shouldn't That's swerve because you law. could you could cause an accident. Yeah. And you're like if you. Swerve yeah. immediately, flip it, or if you brake so hard and someone's up your ass, then yes, that's if, thing. So if you if you swerve, like you should swerve for a deer, that's the limit of swerving. Yeah, don't swerve for anything else. Oh, uh, swerve it, for a dog, uh, don't swerve for kids. Sorry, don't swerve for kids. <laughs> <laughs> shit, uh, shit. Uh, I mean, curve, swerve for kids. Bad. That's that bad. bad. That uh, RSPCA is gonna be on you for running over a squirrel, and uh, an RSPCC is gonna be after me. I, in, in fact, talking about, a deer, I've hit a deer. Actually, I don't want this to be a thing that I'm going around trying to kill animals. Sounds like road. it is though. You know, every meal is needed sometimes. It is. You can't actually pick up roadkill that you've killed yourself. That's another law. So this is it. I right. hit this deer in my golf Ooh. and it's still like bucking. I was like, fucking hell, it's really done some damage. It's still bucking on the side, like half on the side thing. So I called Daisy's granddad, Arthur. He said, what? I said, mate, I need you to come out me with this deer. But all right, me, or it'll be right up. It's proper like... He's a pirate. Yeah, he's, he's half pirate, half farmer. Perfect. So, um, country bumpkin, he comes up and he... Pulls up behind me in his little Astra. He comes out. He's like, right, drag it into the woods. I was like, pardon? So I drag it into the woods with me. I was like, okay, fine. Let's drag this fucking giant deer into the woods. And it's still like half bucking, half the... And then he pulls out this... F- I I thought it was going to be like just a small little sharp knife. It might as well have been a fucking sword. It's like Crocodile Dundee. Where he goes, that's not a knife. This exactly. is a knife. It's like well, a- no, this was what it was like Hook. Captain Hook. He's pulled out this fucking giant like admiral right. sword or something. And... um he just holds the deer's head and slits the throat and puts it out as misery. This podcast is taking a real turn. Sorry. I said no, a real, we'll, we'll real get, turn. We'll get back to it's it. Fine, it's I, fine. I liked I, it, yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, God, half, what are you doing? Oh, my God. The, the life just being being sucked out of this animal. But it was the right You didn't look it in the eyes when it was dying. Oh, I don't know. I was just, I didn't know what to do, mate. I've never been in that situation. And anyway, next thing, I'm trying to like, right, okay, what are we doing? And then he... I turn around to look and he's holding his arm up and he goes, here, put that in the boot. And I, went, and I look around and it's a fucking leg. And I went, what do you mean put that in the boot? He's chopped off on its legs. He said, put that in the boot, will you? I went, oh God. <laughs> I went to his little Astra, opened up his boot. Mate, have you seen Dexter? Yes. Oh, fucking hell. The, the precision, of- precision of how he's lined this boot with bin bags. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Arthur's went, got a bit of a checkered past. I went, oh, fucking hell. And he's put this leg in and come back in. He's like, cutting other other bits off. And he's like, oh, that's shot of shit. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that's a bad one. And, uh, so he's got some things in. He said, and shut the boot. And then just drove, he lobbed the rest of it back in the woods. And, I went, and they just drove off. Went, cheers, off. Thanks for coming. Anyway, back to uh, that. Sorry, sp- just... <laughs> I can't... Oh, sorry, that was because you said you're not allowed to kill... Yeah, you're, you're not, not, yeah. But the second person Can, is... Yes, yes. I mean, he's not supposed to turn up with a really professionally <laughs> layered boot and a sword. Because uh, I, I sort of have visions, though. I imagine if you went around to Arthur's house, a bit like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective 2. What a lovely room of death you have. <laughs> it's like horns, <laughs> dead things everywhere. Jesus. He actually started serving up... Uh, venison steaks from it and he froze a load in the thing yeah, okay. I was like, well waste not want not well he, tr- he tried serving I had vegans on earlier and they were, if they told you if we well, you told had them, just all the vegans on every vegan possible but they were actually level headed vegans they were guys from, from, from Bosch really nice but their whole reason for getting into veganism was animal cruelty and now we've got you have come in a whirlwind you've, or you've killed a deer and your, your pirate grandfather's cut it off and eaten it and now and I know where the squirrel's going so you smoke the squirrel no so the squirrel so squirrel ravioli did right <laughs> What's going to turn up with a turny little box for it? Squirrel, squirrel swear like he just survived. I said, yeah, you know, survived. Just, yeah, as in I didn't run him over. Oh, mate. just whizzed under the wheels. Whizzed under, like in the Fine. thing. Daisy's lost her shit, and then that was just the camel gone, and we're kicking off at each other. 
and then I just snap and we get in the house and uh, I lose the plot, just completely lose the plot, shouting and screaming. She's heavily pregnant as well at the time. Because stress is really good for pregnant women as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, mate. You just fucking twist that yeah. knife. Um, and yeah, I, I just kind of, I, rem- I remember sort of losing control of, of myself. Like didn't, didn't know what the fuck was going on. Anger consumed me. Um, and this had kind of been going on for a while that I was, I was aware of, but didn't know what, what you were having massive blowouts. You mean? No, not massive blowouts, but these feelings inside and all these dark moments that I have. And then out of nowhere, this, this happened and I turned over the house and. What do you mean when you say you took, you read that when you turned over, like what, just start smashing everything up? Smashed the doors in, um, kicked off and then went upstairs. She'd like legged it upstairs. And I remember seeing her on the floor in her dressing room. Oh, you know, all right. <laughs> Turns out rugby's gone all right. Oi, the whole of your brand is completely vaporised. You know, the caravan life. I don't remember seeing a dressing room in the caravan. Good, really, Amazing. really the good. The dressing I, I room. Love... Was it in the West Wing, see what, the dressing room? See, what I really, really enjoy is how, and this is part of this series, part of it, how you can talk about something that is meant to be serious yeah. or emotional or something, but why does it why can it not be yeah of course why can you not still not make jokes about of course. it or jo- not jokes about it but in order to talk about it and make it easier to talk about yeah it but that's what Ricky Gervais and what like Jimmy Carr and all these people say you know like I've lost the plot kick the fuck out of the door smash the door and it's the moment you have to that, that sad moment like four hours later you're like unhooking and drilling a door you're like what <laughs> you're like what what, I mean, what have I done? What an idiot. Like, what an idiot. And, like, you know, Chloe's looking at me and you're, f- you're an idiot. Yeah. Why'd you do that? And I was like, say that daily. Yes. Yeah. I get that a lot. Yeah. Right. So, Karen, so you smashed the house. You said Daisy's on the floor. So, like, yeah, the West she's, wing up, the dressing room. she's in the West Wing. She's upstairs and uh, she's on the floor crying her eyes out. And I just remember, like, fuck, what have I done? I'd gone from losing control to then that moment, like you just briefly described, where you come back to reality and you go, fuck, what is going on here? Um, and she's having, a, she, I tried being like, oh, fuck, what have I done? All of this lot scared the shit out of her. And then um, she's having none of it. And then I've, I've gone, just got in the truck. <laughs> if you do always do it with your eyes, you? you're do looking I? for another gag. No. You're looking I'm for all, another gag. Looking for in the, gag. Yeah, always I think that's for, my problem. No, it's, but it's good because it means that I know that you're listening. Yes. At least you're listening. Yeah, of course. You're not listening because you want to listen. You're listening because you're looking to find the next gag. No, I, I've only, no, I get it. I'm, I get only, it. I'm get only interviewing it. people for, for what a flanker who I'm interested in. Yeah. For, and I'm trying to get you for series one. And I'm interested <laughs> because I, because I, because well, no, because genuinely, all jokes aside, I, I sat there. I want, I want you to finish this story, but I sat there and when I read about it, like, for all my bravado and selfishness and everything else, like, like, I care about my teammates, like, I got to know you. To know that you were going through that was, like, terrible. To know that, uh, you know, people struggle with stuff and not able to necessarily communicate. Like, you said, you don't want to burden it. Knowing that you have to put a brave face on and also knowing what you're like, where you're a bit like a whirlwind of, like, one minute you're, you can be quite moody, next minute you can be the life and soul of the party, depending on how you are. Um, and, and I'll come on to things like Keir and Mile. I read about Keir and Mile. You know, you talk about it in a book about him wanting to commit suicide, standing in Dubai. I mess- I called him up and I was like, Keir, I, I fucking, you know, and I think I, I had no idea he was going through that. And I felt that maybe I had to work on myself because I want people to be understood that they could take me to one side. I, I could be there for someone and maybe I don't give that exterior that exude that exterior that they thought if they came to me I might start taking the piss out of it or 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 whatever but anyway that's a side point so you no, that's, to... that's definitely that's a valid point mate yeah you do you do have to look at yourself yeah and go what was I doing or not doing yeah that meant my teammates felt like I can come to me to to talk about it. but that's the same for everyone in that environment yeah because even if, if even if you had been more open I'm not saying you were no no you know, I know or Less boys scared about, oh, he's just going to use it against me, take the piss, oh, you fucking soft cock, just yeah. get on with it, or something like that. Um, that's because it's not spoken about. It's only spoken about to take the piss, yeah. or it's nonsense. It's not explored as something that's an actual issue. Yeah, or it's, or it's talked about retrospectively after something's happened where yeah. someone talks about it. Yeah, yeah no, you're, you're right. I, 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 I wanted to look at myself and think how we could do it, and I wanted to make sure that people knew that I was... 
I was accessible. Would also maybe spot the signs a bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, but anyway. So, so you, so let's go back. You, you fucked off in the truck, right? Yeah, and that that was the turning point. And um, I was obviously spinning out and didn't know what I was doing. Run out on my my missus, who was about to give birth to our next baby, baby what number eleven, probably. <laughs> Fuck me, Jesus. Um, and then I just came back and. Uh, just full of shame, full of, uh, right, enough's enough now. Yeah. This is what's been going on. Um, I wasn't able to to vocalise that to her at the time. Obviously, she was still like, fuck off, you piece of shit. Like, fuck you, which, you know, completely valid. Yeah. And, but um, she put on a brave face, as she does, um, the strong woman that she is, and she's like, right, we've got to go to Sean's. We'll deal with whatever the fuck has just happened. Yeah. Another time we're going to Sean's 30th. I was like, sweet. Yeah. So we didn't speak. There, luckily, there was no more squirrels on the way to the <laughs> on the way to the 30th. But the doctor John Berry was there, and he was like, "All right, mate, how are you doing?" I said, "Yeah, can we? Can I have a quick word, mate? Can you just have a quick look at me?" And he was like, "Yeah, sure. What you done?" I was like, "Oh." So he sat down in this room in, the, in this hotel, and he's like. I'm looking, and he kept looking up at me and looking at the hand. And I, he's like, "How'd you do this?" I said, "Oh, I was in the gym last night. I dropped fucking weight on it, like, and it's just." He's like, "Drop a weight on it, did you?" I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "How, how heavy was it then?" <laughs> like, fucking hell, what's this Spanish Inquisition? Just, just, just jab it, would you? Or give me some painkillers? He was like, "No, nah, that looked everything all right." And he could see, like in my eyes, something was up, and I just broke down there. Just started bawling my eyes out. And he was like, fuck, what's going on? And the first thing he said to me, he said, is Daisy all right? And I went, yeah. Kids all right? And I went, yeah. He was like, thing. He was like, right, okay, as long as you're right, now what? Because he said, this, that doesn't look like you dropped a weight on it. That he would call a boxer's knuckle. Yeah, it's, you've like, yeah. it's drifted or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Thing. And he was like, uh, so what's going on? And I just opened up to him uh, about that, about how I'd been feeling. Um, what had been going on? Oh, sorry, mate, it's really unprofessional, but I've got a call from Spain. Who the fuck is ringing me from Spain? Bank. What bank in Spain have I got? Santander. You <laughs> didn't see that one, guys. Ah! <laughs> Touche, oh, sir. Well played. Thank you. And, well um, uh, but obviously, I had a game in like two hours. So it was not, and his job is to think, and he was like delving a little bit deeper. He was like, right, we need to get your help. We need to. He was asking all the standard doctor questions, a little bit more probing and how long has this been going on for and all that. And he said, right, we'll sort that out. And then um, he jabbed my hand for the game. Um, in the same game, I fucking made a tackle just before half time on, was it Scout Burger? Is that Yeah, what, yeah, Scout Burger. Yeah. Scout Burger. Yeah. And went to put my arm down and it gave way. I couldn't lift my arm up. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, what's going on here? Got in at half time. I was like, fuck this, brilliant. My hand's banging up my shoulder. And I remember the physio grabbing my arm, trying to revive it a bit. And he's gripped my hand and he's lifting it up. He's like, right, lift it up like that. I was like, yeah, cool, lift it up. All right. And then it dawned on me, he's like, mate, it's coming back. This is much better. And then it dawned on me, he was lifting my arm. I said, fucking let go of my arm. And he let go, he let go of my arm and just fell down. I said, you've been fucking lifting my arm up, you swat. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm trying my hardest, dear mate, just trying to help you. Um, so yeah, it went to, and then we lost that game. Of course we did. We always do it. And then, uh, got in the change rooms and just broke down and Robbo DC, um, all the boys that are in there. They're like, what the fuck is going on here? I'm just brownie. I'm just sat in the corner with a towel over me. head, crying my eyes out. And they're like, fuck. I He's never it... cared that much <laughs> about a loss. <laughs> I, know yeah. it, I know it doesn't like losing, but yeah. this is a bit much in it, mate. And yeah. they, and they, to be fair, they've never seen that. Side no, of me, no, really, I, because yeah. you know, I haven't. I've, I've seen you upset, yeah, but I, I haven't seen you get break down like that. And they were all, you know, coming over and all right, mate. I was like, yeah, yeah, all right, mate. And then, uh, Guzzy, he uh, he came over and he picked me up, put me on the coach. He said, look, mate, we'll sort whatever needs sorting, we'll look after you, we'll sort things out. And that was the start of really trying to explore, um, what the fuck was going on opening up to my wife about the thoughts I'd been having, how dark I'd been. Um, Can I ask about the darkness? Because 
<clears throat> you know, I referenced Kieran and Miles. So in your book, when I, I, I read a, an article about Kieran and Miles, I didn't realise that he'd been the other side of a balcony in Dubai, right? And then I was watching some video stuff about you and reading parts of your book, and uh, you said about his dark thoughts. Like when you say about like, how uh, how dark are we talking, he thought about topping, uh, I mean, I don't want to correct it, killing topping, yourself. Topping, topping yourself. Topping thought, myself. Yeah, like killing yourself. Or uh, was it like, I, or was it the sense of like, I'd rather not be here, it'd be easier if I didn't, when I wasn't being, you know, taking part in life or whatever. Yeah, that, all of those of... It'd be much easier if I wasn't here. Yeah, I'd be, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm more of a nuisance to people than, well, yeah, I, I'm talking not just on the rugby, I'm not talking about the rugby pitch here. I'm talking, um, it'd be better if they don't need me about, um, how do I do it then? How do I go about doing it? So you got to that process of thinking about how you would do it? Yeah, and it's, bear in mind, I spend a lot of time in my car because I fucking live miles away. Yeah. But um, those thoughts were going through my head of like, and... I had no idea why. I had no idea why I would be be coming into work early mornings, driving in, and I'd cry for a solid hour. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'd get to work, dry up, get on with it, and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm sweet. And I'd, and it's like you've described. I'd either be miserable as sin yeah. and tell everyone to fuck off yeah. or I'd be alright lads you know, how you doing yeah let's get all that lot. and it, it was that constant thing but more and more I was finding that I was being that miserable as sin being more distant just stuck in this sort of fog of it seems like you're quite distra- like with the stuff I read <clears> about the disciplinary and some of the stuff it seems like the behaviour became more destructive to try to get yourself isolated get yourself banned as you said That that's how the path went because I always know you as no, we, I would always say you never know what you're going to get. And in one of the videos I saw, you said you described life a bit like a rugby ball hitting. When the rugby ball's in the air, it's beautiful. When it hits the ground, you never know where it's going to bounce. It's a bit like life's like a box of chocolates, but not quite as clever. <laughs> and sort of rebranded Joe Marler, but <laughs> I like what you've done with it. But that's you are that ball. Like I would have said that as a teammate. You never, you never upset me. Did, never did anything to me. But it would be unpredictable. You were very unpredictable. I would never know what mood you're going to be. And I wondered if it was considered because you are quick witted and you are funny, and it was something in a role you were assuming, or actually of what you're saying. It turns out it was like those mood swings were that kind of tumultuous. Help me with that last one. Uh, th- they were that kind of like um, brilliant, explosive, up and down. Very like tumultuous means it's like uh, it's like Gareth. a what, wave and weather. You can have a tumult in the waves in the Gareth, sea, very up and Gareth, down. Gareth, Gareth, yeah. are you there? Do you know what tumultuous, tumultuous, what is it? Tumultuous. Tumultuous means. <laughs> no, well, I don't know if it means that. It basically means that it's like, it's like, it's like up and down. It's like chaotic. Gareth, very Cha- hateful. Very, he- very, yeah, helpful. very helpful. It's chaotic. But she just went, it means a small wooden, wooden, sh- old wooden <laughs> ship. Old, old ship. It's actually a canoe. No, it's not, Gareth. <laughs> you won't just not mean a fucking canoe. Um, um, no, basically Was it, up was and it down. considered? Yeah. I guess it was a combination of well that's it that's an easy way of not letting anyone get close and not letting anyone it, it gives See me behind bit, the curtain it gives, it, yeah, yeah. it gives me more control of like any failures or um piss takes or whatever i mean i can then control that of like oh, fuck you i i do you know what i mean yeah, I get it, 100%. Sort of but also more and more of how you describe the distance and stepping away and fuck it, I don't want anyone near. And it was becoming more and more frequent. And I was like, mate, what is, what is the matter with me? I was like, what is going on? Why am I, like, I've got fucking, I've got my kids, my wife, my friends, like playing rugby. It was the dream. Mm. Well, or the perceived I, dream. You the said perceived you, dream. You said you saw kids in the stand and looked at them and how excited they were and that you said you wish you sort of, you wanted to be like that, but you were ultimately like, get me the fuck off this field, I want to go home. Yeah, 100%. And that would manifest itself in, in games of like, fucking hell, what's the easiest way to get out without actually getting out? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to quit, but I don't if want I to accidentally quit, get chucked but out, if it's fine. Then it's getting me to get away, and but I don't want to actually make the cut thing, but and it wouldn't, 
And it happened 2016 when I pulled out the Australia tour, or should I say the, the Haskell tour? Fucking hell, Jesus Christ, you've rode the wave of that. <laughs> that <don't know> <laughs> That's all I've done. Just milk that. It's unbelievable. That fucking red scrum out. Anyway, that's, I think that's why I yanked it off that game. Yeah, I know. Upset you. It, that tour pissed me off, mm. and that was me like, right. How dare you. he have his moment in the sun? <laughs> I'm going through turmoil. <laughs> I've cried on the way to the game. Yeah, fuck you, Haskell. Tumultuous. Yeah. Yeah. And I cried after that, and then you affected my mental health. Oh, I'm sorry. How many times yeah, do but go, we hug. Don't squirt water at me. Ah! <laughs> Wait, I get that. I get that every day. Ah! Do you know what every fuckwit on social media writes is? Do you remember that time you ran into the post? <laughs> Don't squirt water at me, sir. Ah! Don't touch his scrum cap. I, I get that all it. the time. So you've given me mental health issues <laughs> because so, of that. Rick. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but you're not sorry. If I have. Yeah. However. Yeah. <laughs> It was yeah. good. We had fun. We did. Oh, we had a lot. Mate, you fucking... I nearly passed out with your death grip. Vulcan you death grip, So it? it wasn't... Oh, yeah. Do you know what people... Actually, the guys from Bosch, the, the vegans, they came in, I said I was talking to you earlier, they went, oh, there's a very famous video, isn't it? And then he saw it dawn and went, it's you and him. And I was like, yeah, we're friends. We're oh, yeah, friends. don't worry. And then they realised that you'd actually death grip the shit out of these. Yes. Yeah, so they were nice to you. Yes, they were. Um, where, no, we, we, I was talking about the fact that you would the distances and the different mood swings because it's very interesting that you did seem to con uh, control the narrative between people in terms mm -hmm. of being like, uh, uh, you know, awkward. So people couldn't get a grip of yeah. what you were going to be yeah. like. They couldn't get a grip of your of how to be because you were always in control. Mm -hmm. When someone is so like staccato and like backwards and forwards and says "fuck you" one nil and walks off, you're like, "Yeah, hold on a minute, how how has this even happened? I haven't yeah, said yeah. a word." Yeah, and that was just my way of of keeping everyone at arm's length because the, cl the closer people got, maybe they'd see the weakness or my perceived what I perceived as weakness as um, as I thought it was. But uh, yeah, what so yeah, it got it got down to all that lot and exploring it more, and then I finally uh, managed to um, get an appointment with a psychiatrist at the Priory. Um, and Humphrey. Hello. Humphrey. Hello, Humphrey. Hello, Humphrey. Humphrey was... Great psychiatrist. What name. a great what, Was he an old guy with those little glasses, like pants and they call him, and, uh, on the he, tip of your nose? He, he did, did, have, you he did have glasses. Uh, he didn't... No, he wasn't tiny. He was, you know, a fair set bloke. And I remember turning up, and you have to drive past the uh, this big building, which is actually uh, a mental health... mental hospital. Um for criminally insane all sorts of treatment in-house patients stuff like that to then get to the treatment um center where i went and met him and i got yeah, it was lovely you know a cup of tea cup of coffee you know lovely waiting room brand new building everything like that get upstairs and it's just this like whitish room with yeah you can't desk. have too many colors that send people no. to me. <laughs> yeah. too much stimulation there you go yeah and uh i thought i genuinely thought is there'd be a chaise lounge? Did you? And I went, "Where's the where's the bed?" Then he went, "No, no. I went, what are you don't laughing do that at? These Can days. I? Well, I was open. No, there was. I could lie down. He said, "No, that's not how it works. We just sit here for a chat." And that was the start of um, trying to work out what was going on. Um, and I went back and saw him a fair few times and explored more, uh, more and more. And uh... was this was this the case? Because I remember saying that with the disciplinary hearing, when you kicked that French guy in the head, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. You say in your book that you, when you went in there, that you that you when they were asked for your evidence, you yeah. normally get someone prodding you saying, "Don't say anything to yeah, say yeah, this." Yeah, like, yeah, I didn't yeah. mean it, and you yeah. apparently went. Yeah, it was like, QC, your yeah, mate. Yeah, <laughs> your mate QC. QC. He was sat there and yeah. he was like, um, "Right, this is a plan of action." I went, "No." Nah. He was like, "What?" I said, "No, no, I'll just go in there and freestyle it, see how it goes." And he's the fucking panic on oh his my face. God. Like, oh, yeah. what are you gonna say? Yeah. Am I gonna drop the C bomb left, right, and centre to the panel? And I right. was like, "No, yeah. no, no." And I just went. I, I just, I was just honest with him, and I went, "Look, I feel like shit. This is how I'm feeling. I haven't got control of this, and I don't want to be." Was here. this before or after the, the breakdown with Daisy? Then the it was that. This after... was before, right? So, so this was after Gypsy Gate, right? Because because in that part, you, you said that you spoke to like a, a psychologist, and they gave you a couple of cool tools to cope with. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, then, yeah. so that was still bubbling, not really addressed. No, then you it, had the full meltdown, and that was psychologist. That was a sports psychologist. Right, that was like new tools. Yeah. I wasn't. No. But did you open up to them, or you probably just said, "No, I'm really? just I'm were, a bit angry." The questions were, that were asked were, right. 
relevant to how do you feel when oh, okay. someone melts you in a tackle or you know someone kicks you off the ball or plays yeah, you off the or ball how yeah. do you how do you cope with that and that was like I was like fuck it oh, okay. yeah okay I'll just I'll go and get him back or something or something like that yeah I <laughs> yeah delving that that deeper because I didn't know I had to delve a bit deeper yeah. it was just sort of surface stuff and then uh, yeah I was just honest with them and they're like go see them a lot but um, yeah so Humphrey was a big big turning point for me. Um, in terms of understanding it more, uh, being put on antidepressants, which I was very reluctant to do in the first place. Because there's a bit of stigma around taking me- like medication. Like Immediately, that. I was yeah. like, mate, I don't need antidepressants. And he was like, okay. <laughs> He's like, I've only been to medical school <laughs> for seven years. <laughs> I'm only a psychiatrist yeah. who's what do doing I an evaluation of you and yeah. asks you all these questions. And this is my... Is it prognosis? Diagnosis, 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 yeah. yeah. This is my evaluation. Um I went. No, I'm not doing it. He went. Right? Why? And I said. Well, no, I want to be. I want to be able to do it myself. I want to. You know, the strength within and the, the tools and all that. Like he said. Look, I understand that, but the analogy that was used was when you're poorly, when you got tonsillitis or an infection. I said, Do you take antibiotics? And I went, Yeah. And he went, Well, try and look at these as antibiotics. That for your they're brain. there to for your brain, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for your soul, yeah, yeah. Um, that they're to help you yeah. with your mood and lift you, um, whilst you're still doing your own tools of recognizing when you're going to be at low points, recognizing what are your triggers, recognizing sorting out what is actually the issues that that are deeper. Um, and I was like, oh, that's actually a pretty good way of. of thinking about it it didn't it didn't take any of the stigma away no of because course. i was yeah. th- that was that was i because you think did you imagine you're gonna be like quite like dribbling from one side of your mouth yeah. like not unable to yeah. speak no show no emotion like you see in the movies when yeah, people are flat. highly tranquil just yeah. flat i was like well yeah. oh. i don't want to be like that uh, you know although i was up and down i'd still like to go you still up. enjoyed I'd a bit still like to yeah. go up, yeah. please yeah. you know okay. the peaks because drop. that's what i would have thought do you know what even though we both do and you know you in particular do stuff for mental health if you said about going to medication i still don't have the education around what that would mean if you went on under depression, I thought you know you're one step away from the white coat because you you know like you're you, just like uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you feel yeah. Not, you're numb yeah you're you numb that's thing. exactly a great and word that, and that's yeah that was a worry and obviously the stigma around it as well because I'd have a, I had a conversation with Daisy before going to one of the and she was like good I'm really glad you're going to the, yeah. she, she was like as a, and she said it flippantly and she didn't mean it like thing but she went oh, as long as he doesn't just shove you on medication and put you in the stereotype of there's a lot of people that go and see a doctor when they're struggling and doctors tend to just go there's your prescription Take piece your pills, of, yeah. sort of thing yeah. and I'm not, I don't mean to generalise no but it's all, true but it's that, true that it's, it's true what she yeah. was worried yeah. about like, I, I hope you actually explore more than just relying on a pill yeah don't you've basically got to put the groundwork in and, and actually make physical and mental change as opposed to just be on drugs and stuff and just, exactly you, yeah, fine. and that's why she was kind of and she'd said it but but that had stuck in my mind and that's why i didn't tell her that i'd been put on antidepressants for probably five or six weeks oh really yeah because I was, even then, it was all counterproductive of like, oh, I'm trying to open up. I feel better from opening up, going to see a psychiatrist and understand a little bit more. And then yet again, I'm hiding not, something. I'm hiding it again. I'm hiding to, Fucking because I'm hell. scared yeah. about being you know, judged and the judged stigma again or, or the weakness behind, oh, you're just relying on pills and all that. So it wasn't until then I was like, right, I'm, I'm on antidepressants. And that was, and she did was you like, find them or did you just come clean? No, no, I came, I came clean, right. and um, it's such a bad word, isn't it? Coming came clean, clean, coming clean is if you've done something bad. I mean, did you reveal? Well, it? let's explore coming clean. Uh, let's not go down that. No, way. no. <laughs> I mean, you could explore. interpret it. Yes, you could. Okay, but we're not. Yeah. We're talking about mental well, health and pills. Oh, okay, yeah, but yeah. and uh, uh, <laughs> oh god, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then. <laughs> It sounded like, sound like you got your father in law in the room. All right. All right. Just come clean. Uh, oh, God. Anyway, um, and that was, you know, another step in the thing, opening up and being more um, open to how I was feeling and, and the communication between me and my, my closest people, my, my support network. Um, and being on them and then having the chance to. Um, Obviously, I wasn't playing for England at the time. I'd quit in that 18, that October 18, and then got the chance to go and play Bar Bars. 
And that week was fucking carnage, absolute carnage, but also brilliant. It made, I, I, I remember talking to you yes. after the game, didn't yeah, I? You yeah. and Ashy and uh, was it Alex? Was Alex? Uh, Alex yeah, Payne, yeah, yeah. Been, yeah. And um, speaking with such fondness of how much fun I'd had that week, but how much fun I'd had playing rugby and remembering everything of why we played, you know. And I'd gotten lost down the route of the the sort of serious work side to it, how professional it is and all that, like, rather than just... Remembering what we, you did. Exactly. Yeah. We just played it for a laugh, yeah. didn't we? You yeah. know? And, um, it was brilliant. And then uh, meeting Eddie that week, getting absolutely shit-faced, and I talk about <laughs> that in the book of him stitching me up in the press and afterwards. Tell me the story. I haven't seen this. I haven't read this part. So we agreed that... Um, Barbarians, we could agree that we'd enjoy ourselves on and off the field. But Thursday, no, Friday night was the cutoff because it was a Sunday game and Friday night was the cutoff. Pat was like, look, let's take the piss, but not take the piss. And uh, we were like, yeah, yeah, sure, fine. And then um, we'd gone pretty hard, reasonably hard. In fact, very fucking hard. Yeah, I get that, yeah. So we went hard. Yes, okay, of course, fine, yeah. Sorry. And then... Uh, Eddie had texted me in the week saying, how's things, mate? How's bar bars? Um, I'm in London this week, if you're about. And we'd been texting on and off, you know, he's like yeah, with emojis yeah. and shit. <laughs> yeah, like, he yeah. doesn't actually send any uh, words. Yeah. He just sends the odd red glass emoji or a fist pump. And you're like, mate, you're like 70. You can't he's be, sending, kids, you can't be yeah. sending fist pump I've got to admire the fact that, he, he, that his technology isn't there, but he's trying to engage lads <laughs> who just live on technology all day. You've got to admire it. Which is why he does yeah. it. And he, also, I love his like, shoe game. You know, like you talk about oh Gavin the kids. God. He's got such an extensive shoe game. He's only thing he cares about is how good your shoes are. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be like, Hess, mate. mate and fucking underarms the are fuck fucking... are you wearing on your feet, mate? Fuck. <laughs> and... Um, he said, oh, if you're belt such and such. I said, well, I'm belt on Friday if you fancy things. He said, fine, come meet me. Meet me at the Anglers at seven. And the Anglers is a pub just around the corner from the Lensbury. Yeah. And so I got a taxi out there on the Friday night and turned up and the whole of the England team were there. So it was the England under 23s, under 24s yeah. team. Eddie had distanced himself because we got licked out the year before. Yeah. Remember when Rodrajo and Ashley yeah. and that <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. carved us up. And... He put someone else as head, co head coach. Yeah, he put, yeah. he put Jim Mallinder and someone. He said, mate, you lot, you yeah. just do what you want with it. I'm <laughs> yeah, gonna yeah. Skip it. With his tin hat on, just hiding. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Classic. I didn't even think of that. You know, I thought he was giving coaches another opportunity. Oh, How, naive chance, How naive am I? How naive am I? I love that from him. What a very clever man. Very clever. It turned up all the coaches and the players there were having their team meal out at the Anglers. And I was like, oh, fucking a couple of them. Phil Dowson had spotted me and he was like, what are you doing? I was like, uh, and he's like, are you all right? I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm still pissed. And he was like, what are you doing? I said, nothing, just trying to meet a mate. And then <laughs> just waiting for a mate. <laughs> just Have you seen that that clip when he's stuck in the car? Anyway, um, so I left there and I said, mate, I text Eddie and was like, you've stitched me up here. Is this a stitch up? You've told me to meet at the Anglers just to fucking meet all the team that are playing on Sunday. So I'd know, mate, the Anglers is busy. Meet me in the bar at the Linsbury. I was like, okay, cool. You could have well, told me. <laughs> went to the Linsbury. Um, oh, fucking hell. That was another thing. Went and met at the, <laughs> met at the Linsbury. I saw Sam. Do you remember little Sam, the physio? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the, not physio, the masseuse. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think. I said, what are you doing here? She said, oh, I'm the physio for the thing. I said, why don't you? I said, oh, well, yeah. I said, cool. And she said, oh, are you here for uh, Matt's wedding? I said, Matt who? And she went, Matt Parker. I went, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. I went, Matt Parker's wedding. She was like, yeah, yeah. All the old lot here. Um, Faz is here. Like, old big Faz. Catty here. Uh, all the old lot all come over. And I was like, oh, God, can this get any worse? What, this what, meeting is not going what well. What do you reckon the what wedding buffet was just protein bars? <laughs> That was that berry, those berry shakes. Remember, we saw that photo, that photo went round of him in the jacuzzi, the berry shake. Yeah, so, the berry oh. shake. He always had a protein bar and a berry shake in his heart. Yeah, amazing. And then that David Brent. Um, <laughs> Star. Do you remember uh, I said um, in that meeting went and all those numbers lead to one place, one place only, the job centre. <laughs> and then he got God, sacked, mate. and it was like he's a lovely bloke. I, I've got really loads of time. Do you, do you do that meet? Uh, do you? Write about that meeting in your book. Yeah, I talked oh about it. Yeah, God. I mean, I didn't. I went to some of the details. What I said about the doctor going, you know, you know, going if well, if it was a if it was a World Cup final, would you play? And I was like, no, it's not. Is it's fucking one of Wig's shit mauling <laughs> sessions? <laughs> Why the fuck would I do that? 
you know, yeah, I did. I went pretty hard. You went hard. Yeah, I went, but I went hard about, I think, weak doctors in the game just being yes men, you know, going to, you know, basically saying that, you know, uh, I've got concussion, I've got bad back. Well, well, you know, would you, would you train for this World Cup? So that's not a fucking excuse. You're the doctor. <laughs> you tell the coach, well, we need the players. Well, you can't have him. I'm feeling ill. I need to rest. You know. Wow, you've I've opened up a can there. You've yes, I have. I've, I've, I've detracted. I'm making the podcast about me. Again. No, we, good. We, no, I like it. Right, that's so you a got, fair point. So you went to Matt Parker's wedding. I went to Matt Parker's <laughs> wedding. Yeah. So you, 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 like, you, I'm 20. Where are Matt they? Matt Parker, yeah. Where are they? Hide me. She's like, I don't know. So I met Eddie in the bar and sat in the corner and he's got two bottles of red there. And uh, we just start chewing the fat because we hadn't seen each other for since I'd quit in September time. <laughs> How many times you've quit and retired? <laughs> I know you talk about it, but most people just don't come back. No, I know. But, but you sort of don't even properly quit. It's sort of like I'm off. And then well, it's like a, yeah, it's like I a get, tantrum. I, I get, yeah, well, not such... Well, a little bit of a tantrum. Maybe it was part of... Uh, well, it wasn't maybe, it was definitely part of not understanding what, and it had been going on for a long time. So in 2016, when I pulled out that tour and I was like, I can't do that. It was my way of thinking, right, rugby, the pressure and environment of international rugby and going away for long periods of time is what's wrong yeah, with yeah. me. So if I stop that, if I take that away. You'll start feeling better. And I'll start feeling go. better. Yeah. And then I take it away. I feel better for a week or two and then I go, fuck, I still feel the same. So yeah. it's not the same. So it's not that. So what the fuck's going on? But I'll just park it. So then months go by, a year go by. You parked a lot of things to, to the point you've got a multi-story <laughs> car park of things. You're like, I parked so much. That's what we do though. As men, that's what we do. Like Chloe, Chloe has to go with me the whole time because like, you know, retirement's hard. You know, and the one point you said at the beginning and, and I want you to finish the story with Eddie, but all of us got shit going on and, and sometimes People sometimes feel that they can't talk about mental health because they haven't had some sort of tragedy. They haven't had some sort of really bad event. But sometimes your shit just happens or stuff happens to you. Um, but we're great, especially sports people, just parking stuff. She goes, you just bury your head in the sand, carry on, and and, and, and that's it. And I'm, you know, Which is good to an extent. Yes. But you've got to address stuff, otherwise it just remains undressed. Yeah, if you Before you've got an NCP parking lot of, of <laughs> park problems and the whole building's falling down. You've got a bill for a million quid's worth of parking tickets. Which is, have, you str- have you struggled then? I have, yeah, Post uh, yeah, yeah. I have, yeah. I mean, we. I mean, I want to. I, I will talk about it. I mean, I, oh, I'm, sorry. Yeah, you want to finish the story anyway. Yeah. Uh, the wine keeps coming. This poor lad, it, and it was the night before the final as well. Exeter, there was a couple of Exeter fans, and they'd spotted us in the corner, and uh, they'd come over. Oh, can we have a photo? And Eddie's like, uh, and he goes, oh, you know, I'm a big fan, but I'm a, I'm a centre. And I remember Eddie, Eddie was half cut at this point, and he turned around, and he goes, a centre. And he slaps him on the gut. It was a big lad. He slaps him on the gut. And he goes, mate, you look more like a fucking prop. And it was just like a casual thing. And I was like, fucking hell, mate. He just does what he wants. He just called him. This a is amazing. Fuck. I've never seen any steam because you know he's always got a glass of red and a bottle and a pint Sparkling of water. Sparkling water. Yeah. That's that's his trick. That's his. He always has a glass. Yeah, but, of red, but at some laugh. point the tipping point is going to go towards the wine. And obviously, what you're saying is it does. But he's very stadium. clever because he leaves before it gets to there. Yeah. He'll go and watch about 17 hours of rugby. Yeah, um, or says he does, but then he falls asleep on his laptop. <laughs> like, do you remember that first game I said in the book? You know, you know, he never sleeps and works. So I remember that flight back from Scotland. He was upside down with his laptop. <laughs> I was fucking sleep, and I, and I was like, oh my god. He's uh, no, yeah, but he had eyes. Painted to his eyelids, so it still looked like something. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Those Don't glasses with the things I like never homeless. sleep. I never fucking sleep. Mate, he sleeps under the bed in Annie's bed, under the dog bed. <laughs> I've, I said, I've asked him. I interviewed him for the series one, and I said, look, I know you've got this unbelievable work at it, but every time I knock on that door, I, it takes you about ten minutes to open it, and when you get out, you, you, I've seen you've got the dog bed. Annie's not in her bed. You, he's curled up in the bed under the desk. <laughs> That's where he gets his naps from. All I. Do you remember South Africa 2012 when that uh, uh, security guard? He was like, I can't remember his name, might have been Tone or something. And he was like, Oh, you know, when you lot go to bed, I'm up all night looking at the I'm looking at looking after everything in the team room and you know, you know, you can't be too careful and all this lot. And we're like, cool. And jet lag or something, one of the boys couldn't sleep and he gets up and it's about half one, two o'clock in the morning, comes down to the team room to get a protein shake, or whatever. And he looks outside the door and Tone's fucking fast asleep, about <laughs> upright, just the thing, and he's like all oh, right, you're up all night looking after the thing, giving it the bigger. Do you it. remember the lion security guards? Well, I oh, said, I said, you lads are on that sake. TV program faking it. And they went, what do you mean? I said, you're not. I said, 
it's wrong to call you security guards. You're fire marshals. <laughs> you, you, like, I wouldn't put you as a steward to look after like a, a, you, a, a tiny uh, stadium. You were another level with those security guards. Mate, you know, you know one of them, honestly, kept staring at me. Like, stare, give me that thousand yard stare, you know, like special forces stare. And I went... Mate, I said, you won't kill me. You're looking at me like you're going to kill me. I said, do you know why you won't kill me? Because I said, you probably wouldn't hide the body properly. You're that incompetent. You get caught. <laughs> mate, they were livid. But what if, mate, they were? What, they actually killed me? No, no. What if they were actually, you know... They weren't. They could they kill weren't. you with their hands. They weren't. They couldn't. I, honestly, they couldn't. They were lovely guys. They were, <laughs> they were at, at best, doormen, bouncers. <laughs> Unqualified bouncers. Mate, uh, they, the head of the, uh, the head of the lion's hall got filled in. Do you not remember? <laughs> Do you not remember? One of them's one of their jobs was to protect him, and they kicked fuck out of John Spence. Do you remember? He, and then and then someone else is standing there. Oh, what about Pete? What about Pete in that bar? Yeah. But, uh, what about in the gym when that bloke attacked and the other guy was oh doing the other guy God. was doing was doing pull downs and his headphones on and that bloke tried to have a fight with us the midweek veg fight and I was like. Secu where were you where were you and he's fucking sculpting his guns in the corner time off right that's amazing I um, see, yeah so Eddie slapped him on the dial with the red wire slapped him on the dial yeah. thingy and we were chewing the fat about all sorts of things. and he said look mate if uh, if you want to come back the door's open and I was like he said but you'll have to fucking work your tits off because we've had Mooney come through um, we've got Genji we've got Mako and he kept reeling off different things I was like <laughs> So is the door open or is it is it a, a glass door? Uh, it seems like he shows you a picture. It's a, it's a picture of a door, <laughs> but you can't open it. It's shut, and I just want to. I just want you to come back in so I can poke fun at you yes. and uh, take the piss out of you. And anyway, so that was the chat. And left it at that. And Daisy was due to give birth to Felix the following week, and me and her had, had no conversations about going back to England, going back for the World Cup or anything like that. There was not that was never that was never on the cards of she, she was like, You've you've made your decision. I'll back you whatever, but if you've quit, you've quit. And that you know, that was it. So it wasn't until she gave birth on the seventh and I'd this was so this was the week before. And I'd kind of sort of made my mind, oh, I want to go back and give it another crack, see if I can make it into that 31-man squad. Um, also, I'd been sent loads of messages saying that I was like 25 to 1 to make it on the plane. So so her mum mentions it. She said, oh, so Joe's thinking about going back. In the hospital when she's come in to meet Felix. <laughs> and Daisy's gone, uh... Yeah, well, uh, we haven't spoken about that yet, have we? Like, you know that death stare. Mm. You think, you know, mm. like, I was the like, permanent look my wife gives me. You mean yeah, the only stare I, I, I know? Just turned to my mother-in-law like, you <laughs> wait till we get out of this fucking room, <laughs> fucking hell. Um, so I was given an opportunity to go back and and try and give it one more crack, and I was lucky enough to to make it and have one of the best experiences of my life in t in terms of rugby because. It was fucking great crack, mate. We, you know, we lost. But to be able to do it in a position where I'd um, been at my lowest point, didn't I thought that was a thing, and then go back and experience it differently, you know, experience it on antidepressants um, in a position where I was far more aware of my mental health, how what triggered me, what was going to, and all that sort of stuff, but also with a mindset of trying to get the other boys to enjoy it as much as they could because you never know when your last game mm. is and you're a long time retired. Fuck me, I know that. <laughs> I've done it under <laughs> but that's time. You're not, you're not that long time retired. You're actually the, the you know, the, the, the exception that proves the rule. You're actually not. So is that not I a don't good, know what that means. I shouldn't I don't, use I, that phrase. Uh, yeah, I don't think you You're retired for as long as you're not retired. Yeah, you're retired for as long as you're, until your head gets back on. <laughs> So yeah, that that was it, really, mate. That's and that's been an ongoing thing. Um, keep exploring and discovering mental health. I even watched your, your mate Roman Kemp last night. Yes, did you watch it? No, I oh, didn't. I, I saw about it. I heard. I saw you. Um, I think your Instagram about. Yeah, it, on BBC, yeah. mate. Fuck, that was really good. Really. Well, he really lost his well he lost his best mate, didn't he? I, I remember talking to him about that. You know, on air, discovering they'd found the body while he's on air and trying to do it, and and basically had no. No idea, no concept of what was going to. It was it was quite hard to watch at times because of how raw it was. Yeah, like how, how recent it was as well. Yeah, being like fucking out. But but fair play to him to actually delve into it, explore that, and 
raise awareness around it. There was this, this group of kids in, in Ireland that he went to and how young they were, mate. I just like one of their mates killing themselves. That, sh that shouldn't be happening. No. It shouldn't be happening. And it's amazing that as much awareness and um, profile around suicide and mental health there is, still not enough, particularly in men. Like We still have issues. The rate's we still gone have up. issues. The rate's gone up. And oh. I, th I think the more we talk about it, like I think sometimes when people talk about a subject, they feel like they'd make a difference because we're talking about mm. it. But all this stuff is, is, is still going up. It's, 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 it's going climbing. You know, it's the biggest killer of men under 40. And, and uh, you know, I think we're making the right noises and stuff. And I think the right stuff needs to happen. But it, it, it's still, I posted a video about asking men to speak up and, and, and saying that it was important and that, you know, I was vocal. You know, I, I haven't gone through the same experience as you, but, but you know, you, you're very vocal and a great advocate of it. And if two meatheads that look like we do can turn around and say, this is it, and this, we have good days and bad days. That's very important. But I, I got back going. Well, talking never got anyone anywhere. Man up, all this shit. And what I reiterated last night as I did a video was, talking without physical change is nothing, right? Just talking about shit. Yes, it might raise awareness, but you know, you talking about it and opening up to people is fine. But you needed to find the tools, and it was your 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 you know your um, psychiatrist. It was the antidepressants. It was a, a support group. It was recognizing stuff. Those are physical changes that mm. you put in place. Mm. And just talking about it, no one's saying go around and fucking light a candle, get around a thing, and start playing a guitar and just talk about it or, or, or speak about it. It's actually you know you speak about it, so someone becomes aware, so your missus hears it and goes. You need to see someone, and you're like, I'm, I, I don't, you know. <laughs> I can't get over how eloquently you've put it. You know, no one's saying fucking get around a fire yeah, and light yeah, a candle and yeah. just come by all the shit. Out yeah, of that's it. what like, it is. It's that's what people, but no, people think. No. People think it's all about you know cold water therapy or free or these are all like you're changing habits by doing different things. You're you're changing focus. So you know, breathing takes you from worrying about your problems to suddenly being on something else because your mind is never clear. You know, they say clear your mind. You don't. Mm. As soon as you go to clear your mind, you think, mm. if I said blue elephant and you try and clear your mind, what do you think of as a fucking blue elephant? It's red. Well, fine. Red elephant. I, I, I now I'm thinking about red elephant. Um, this whole podcast has been ruined because I can't stop thinking about red elephant. But that's my that's my real my real point, and I and I'm and I'm fascinated with it, and I think it's amazing that what you're what you're doing I, I think you're bang on there yeah that talking about it is brilliant yeah to raise awareness, but it's not enough it's no. the tools that's the part of it actually helping give tools to people to actually ask the right questions but also be be able to open up yeah and feel comfortable enough in your support group um to let in, you bang on there, James because people that's say fucking hell I'm, that's a, I'm fucking hell I'm giving you a compliment. Thank you. I know it's unbelievable. No, but actually, I actually wrote in this thing here with my, with my notes about the questions because there's some, some more I want to talk to you about. I think we're okay for time. But it was um, <laughs> you said um, actually when you called me up after the World Cup, I could tell how much you enjoyed it because you, even though you were steaming and probably too drunk to remember the conversation, we had a good FaceTime and you were the loveliest you ever been to me. Did I? Do you not remember this? We spoke for an hour. You were steaming outside, having some crisps. <laughs> Read Chris what you Oh, shit-faced. Yeah, shit-faced. I uh, did I have a cigar. No, no, you no, you were having a cigarette. There was a, I remember one of the, uh, someone came up to me said, "Show me a picture." I said, "I don't remember that." This was the night of the final night. Yeah, this was this the, was the next morning the or the, next the, morning. after you you FaceTime me drunk and obviously sitting on your own board. And you're like, "I know who I'll call." James, James. I <laughs> no, miss good. James. Yeah. Let me speak to James. Yeah, and you um and we had a good um we had a good chat and you were lovely, but you seem to like to be, to have been really. In, to enjoy it, and, and do you think with that sort of transformation now, is that is that continued? Do you still feel on that path, or or do you still feel you've got lots of work to do? No, I I still think uh, it's an ongoing thing. I think I I look at mental health as the same as physical health. You know, you're a massive unit, and you massive advocate for physical well being and all your gym and your supple leopard. What is it? Your leopard. What supple you, leopard. Supple leopard yeah. shit and your fucking <laughs> shit. all your squash turkeys and stuff. Yeah. Um and you can track that, can't you? You can you you, you track your yeah. macro nutrient shit and how much you're benching and increasing mm. a, a progressive overload and um <laughs> I get the point. I <laughs> yeah, we get the point. You <laughs> don't have to mention every transient, modality uh, that I've ever involved tra myself transient in. Transient hypertrophy. You're basically uh, saying mental whatever. health is a constant working in progress. You keep well, it's having not, it's not work, there's not an end. No. It's not it's not a beginning or an end. It's just I see it as a constant check in with my wife, with my friends, with thing and uh, the same way you get fat. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You mm. get fat and... Oh, I don't know about that. I've never actually no, got not that, you. I know what you mean. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I've never got fat. Okay. Your, your health deteriorates yes. physically, yeah. so does it mentally. So mm. it's always on case of it. And, you know, I have my good days and my bad days, but I'm far more equipped now to recognise when they are and also to go and ask for help or, or retract a little bit and deal with it myself. Have you always had those issues or was it professional rugby that, that brought them to head? Because I believe your nickname was Psycho. As a kid, and I can't, and I mean, <laughs> what, what I mean, I mean, that's the first time I heard it when I was doing my research. I can't imagine that was easy. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Um, or was it? Because it was, it was part of the whole bravado thing as well that we touched on about self fulfilling prophecy. I'm just going to create that demeanor. It, I, you, yeah, yeah, a lot like that. And it was easier to be this sort of angry kid that people were scared of because he had this fake persona. Um, meant that they wouldn't ever come near me and I could control the narrative or I could control the situation because if someone didn't like me, it's because I I I was in control of that. If someone was nasty to me, it was like, oh, that's because I, you know, I, yeah, I wanted you. Or if, if someone rejected me or didn't, do you know what I mean? It was, mm. Oh, it, I'm in control of it. And there's that, that thing. Um, have I always been a bit of a thing? Yeah, I, I guess up and down as a kid. Um, got bipolar quite a lot. As in, not actual. Um, Just people labelling you. Because yeah, you like up and down, up and down yeah. constantly. A lot of anger issues, a lot of aggressive behaviour, and um, rugby was meant to channel that. It was only a matter of time before you know those behaviours also manifested themselves on the pitch um, constantly. So um, yeah, there was a lot of that. But psycho you kind of with a nickname as psycho as a 12 year old you kind of like oh well i kind of live up to this yeah. a little bit but uh, but then i ironically it actually suited like you said it suited you what you wanted to do because you would just hid behind it it was a yeah. perfect what a perfect way of doing things yeah. i mean i it's so interesting listening to your story because i i feel that our relationship we become closer as mates because but i didn't do you know what it was now i understand it through i thought maybe you i just you accepted me more and we've become friends. But now I think it, I look back at it and actually think it's because you maybe that walls come down a bit for, for everybody. And maybe you're not trying to, because maybe you see, cause I'm quite a big character and it'd be easy sometimes if you're not in the mood just to put the fence mechanism out and not let me anywhere near it and just shut me down before I got started. But I feel like we become closer because you don't have that or you don't seem to have that same volatility. I find you much more consistent now in yeah. everything you do. I guess it's a two-way thing. It's specifically about our relationship is the more I've gotten to know you and understand you more, mm. knowing the way you act and why the way you act yeah. or, you know, what makes you tick is part of then that, that closeness, understanding people more, um, knowing why they do what they do what they do when they do, do you know that yeah. is is something that I, fascinates me and is important to to building those relationships but in no way shape or form am i saying that we're close mates okay we're, fine we're fucking, i just want to make because i wanted to get it on video and i was not i wanted to get a video okay. and then live through it vicariously but um it's this that's a perfect segue into something that you said in your book and i want to explore this as to why i think there's an influx of mental health issues in sport in general and rugby you said there's a theory that that we're seeing such a tsunami of mental health issues in my generation of players because we're coached by men who came from the amateur era i think it holds some water their old school attitude was you need to be tougher macho showing no weakness arguably much easier for them in, in uh, than it is for us training was a part-time release for their real job not their whole life that's not to say that that doesn't that attitude doesn't work still um, or you can't be successful with that sort of mentality. I just think it's very limiting. Um, and especially with the generation of players coming through, you you have to have coaches and and staff and, you know, physios and S&C and, you know, all members of staff that are better at understanding their players, <clears throat> what works for them, putting an arm around them, working with a bit of a stick, you know, I, I often would say, look, I need more of a stick. And they're like, fucking hell, mate. Like, you don't ever let us get near enough to you with a bit of a stick mentality or giving you a kick up the arse because you'll just kick up a fuss. And fucking <laughs> yeah, you'll moan before you start. Throw a tantrum and all this. Yeah. So w you're telling me you want a stick. I give you a stick and then you tell me to get fucked. I'm like, yeah, it's just a bit of a game, really. Yeah. yeah. Give us a carrot instead. And they're like, oh, well, you want a cake? Do you want another fucking cream cake? Yeah. Anyway, it's much better with the generation coming through to have more of an understanding of, of what makes them tick to get the best out of them. Um, and it's, but it, I guess it's a fine line between pandering 
to to players needs yeah um and actually understanding to to sort of get get those nuggets out of them to actually yeah not letting people who are because we have a big excuse culture in, our, um, this, in this world i believe that we i've got so many cheerleaders for mediocrity so if you are a moany whiny whingy person with no backbone no determination no no um kind of drive you've got a whole audience that will go it's fine to be like that it's okay and then these people are just allowed to be average when i think it is such a fine line understanding how to get the best out of people and also spot those who need the carrot and hit, need the stick and i i think i think guys like eddie i know he ha- people have his, his critics but i think he gets it i had michael checker on here i think he gets it i think even warren gatland in his sort of different he he gets it to a certain extent even you know with some of the mind games but i think a lot of a lot of environments don't seem to to, to have that i don't think no and they they tend to be the ones that, that are being held back at the minute um, especially moving forward. So you love Eddie, don't you? You really love Eddie. I do love Eddie. You love him a lot. I do. You had him on here, did you? I did, yeah. And that amazing. went that went well, did it? Yeah, it was amazing, yeah. And why do you think he liked you so hard? Because he fucking loved you. I don't know why. I, 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 he loved you. Yeah, I don't understand. He still does, you know, yeah. Still, I, 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 still... I, I, do you know what? The honest answer is I don't know. I think it's the fact that um, he just, because he bought into me, he knew that I would do anything. If he mm. just, all he had to do was put his arm around me, like pull a string and wind me up and set me in the right direction. And that I think he enjoyed the fact that I have, I wasn't just a rugby player; that I was my own personality. Like I think he liked likes you because people could because people wouldn't understand why, for example, Eddie would like you and me initially. <laughs> why? Because why? You're you know both gobby, both a bit out there, both not you know shy, causing a bit of controversy sometimes. Big characters. Most fans want a vanilla player. They want someone that's just humble and quiet. And I'm not saying you walk around talking yourself up, but we're not necessarily the usual mould, I don't think. No, also... I... No, we're not. But I think there's definitely more... There's characters through, littered throughout the game. Mm. It's just about being allowed... Allowing them to... To show their character, yeah. to show their personality, as well as play, you know, not going the other way, which sometimes we probably have done, yeah. where we've forgotten about the rugby. Or all characters, and we're all fucking, yeah. You know, oh, look at me, yeah, you know, me, 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 me. Look yeah. at this, what I can do on the video. Look at what I can. Oh, I think you sound, you sound like you're describing just me. Though. <laughs> I think that you sort of went off. That sound like an impression. It sound like you said us to make me feel comfortable, Sorry, and then knife me. Did I? Yeah, yeah. mainly you. Because it's kind of sounding like my voice as well, a bit oh, whiny. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, look at my Instagram. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look at Rig City, baby. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, sounds very much so like me. me. So have I never said Rig City no, with me? No, because no, I think you'd be trade description at. They'd call you up and oh, go, that's good. fraud. Really good yeah, from that's you. Fraud. You're very welcome. good from you. Uh, there's definitely, mate, there's loads of personalities in the game. It's just about, the trouble is, not the trouble, because it's not the definitive answer, definitive answer, but the media play a big role in allowing these characters to come through the game. Because they can't fucking lambast them. Is that a word? Yes. Is that the right word? In lambasted, the... yeah. Lambasted, the... lambasted, lambasted. Depending where you're from, yeah, but yeah. Lambasted. Yeah. <laughs> and they can't bag them for for coming out and showing personality. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Or or and then they bag them if they don't show personality or like, mate. The amount they hammer faz. Yes. For the like, oh, he just gives this fucking standard shit. We want to see a bit more of it. What? What do you mean? You want to see like? That's him, and he's not going to give you more if you keep fucking hammering him. Hammering him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. ease up a little bit. Just treat people a little bit more, you know, level-headedly, and that you might get more out of Cause, it. Because you were quoted as saying about the the, the the you were struggling with the meat. In, I think in the the bit where you were uh, with the tribunal when you sort of came and actually got yourself reduced sentence. So <laughs> fuck you, QC. It worked, it worked yeah, really yeah, well. Yeah. The narrative you pulled in the yeah, story, um, you know. Uh, y- you said the media was difficult. You know, talking to Michael Checker, talking to Warren Gatland about it, both of them sort of cited the media as being a problem. Now, obviously, social media kind of detracting and not letting them be, and pressure it puts on coaches and people. And Warren kind of basically sh- shies away now from you know speaking too much because everyone just gets bastardized. Yeah. You know, do you think that 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 media and social media is, is just made being a sportsman way worse, and and is and is a re- down to a lot of us having problems? Uh, it it definitely plays a a part in it there's a lot of kids these days that are constantly on their phone you know i'm i'm, I'm fucking constantly on my phone you're constantly you're definitely constantly on your phone yeah brilliant um but the kids they're looking for that that feedback from joe blogs 
905 to say, oh my God, uh, Marcus Smith is the world's best 10 at the minute. Oh, his kick was so good. But they're also looking for Joe Bloggs 2042 to go, oh, Marcus, sh- Marcus Smith is a bag of shit. Mm. Um, he shouldn't be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, th- and it's like, why? Why Why do you care so much about the opinions of those? And that's also the media, you know, it comes mm. in with it, the, the mainstream media. Why do you care whether you've got a four out of ten? I think it's 10? human nature, though, isn't well, yeah, it? But, so what, but why? I, like, it's if, a, if, you t- if I play badly yes. and you turn around and, and, and said... Three out of ten. Mate, you, yeah, specific, okay, when, mate, you're a three out of ten yeah. today, I'd go, fucking hell, you're, you're right there. And I'd feel, oh, right, it's important. Yeah. My teammate... Yeah gives me that feedback and I respond and I work on it and stuff like that. But why does it matter that who gives a shit whether Mick clear? <laughs> That's why. Has got, not that Mick's a bad, Mick, Mick's a really good bloke yeah. in, it in terms of, but I use an example. Yeah, I know as mean, in, yeah. so, you know, what his opinion shouldn't, Dictate. Charlie Sales giving you two out of ten. Charlie Sales, <laughs> yeah. nobody kicked off yeah. about the fucking the shambles in twenty fifteen. Yeah, sh- oh, the the tent was rusty. Oh, the, the tent poles. was rusty. Uh, the the breakfast was cold. That was it. I yeah. was like, you cheeky fucking. And then he it was did, ketchup and- for your. Bacon and then he dobbed you in because he saw you having a cake in um in bag shop and wrote yeah that wrote one? Joe Marla it. that was it I remember he oh Marla was there with a couple of the boys and he womped the chocolate <laughs> cake that womped it probably did you actually. did it like a womp I, yeah I did inhale it anyway um, they do play a massive role yeah. in terms of pressures of a sportsman where because they and they're looking for it as in the the, the players are looking for that um, and I guess we need to get better at educating the players of don't mind but it's it's a catch-22 because you want to give more yeah to the media you want to give more to the fans and express who you are but then you're also putting yourself out there to get shot down mm. i'll give more to the fans if they're paying <laughs> <laughs> your only fans page is it i, I mean have you got an only yeah, fans page? what are you doing on there training and a lot of topless photos <laughs> just training and topless yeah photos. no willies or anything like that well i'm i'm getting quite a few requests do you know what i'll be honest with you You've got a big bear following i have uh, you have yeah i'm I a have. muscle mary you'd be a bear <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that a thing? Is it yeah. muscle that Mary? DC would be a twink. <laughs> There's so many terminologies. So, I learned the we whole could, thing. Oh, wait, we could really we get could a good band a, oh, together you know, and make a killing. Do you know what the thing with it was? Is that I went on into it and they were like, "Put health and fitness. Go on to health and fitness. Put health and fitness." But then I did a poll, and the poll was like, uh, "Diet, training, DJ, nutrition, tops off." Dick something else, right? Tops off, 700 votes. <laughs> Nutrition one, diet two. I was like, well, fucking hell. What am I supposed to do here? And then do you know what I did? Chloe, like, I sold a picture of my feet for 40 quid. What? Some bloke paid 40 quid to see a picture of my feet. I don't know. You did it? Of course I did it. 40 quid. No, no, no I'm not I'm not turning my nose up at 40 quid. Yeah. I'm talking, I'm turning my nose up at you, Oi. basically. One. Two, and they went, can you see the souls? I went, Chloe, do that. She went, I'm not being involved in this. So I had to take a picture of my feet. And I sold it for 40 quid. Well, and the bloke said he wants to worship me. He's having a fucking mate, time of his people, life. Just give people what they want. That's Look, what I mean. Think about the joy that you've given that guy. Yeah, but every day I get this, every day. Show stick, show stick, show stick, show stick. All day. Come on then. No, but I can't. I won't. I can't. What do you mean? Because a bit like, do you remember Lucy Quite Pinder? Never, remember Lucy Pinder never showed her nipples. Did remember, she not? Never. She never did it. Or, or, or it was in Nuts magazine, Zoo Whatever. magazine. I think eventually she gave in, but she Surely hyped Surely someone's up. seen she, her nipples. She, she, no, someone has, but oh. she hyped it up so much. That I'm hyping it up. You know, if someone's not seen my willy, 10, 10 grand, I'll, I'll get it out. I'm trying to think if I've seen your dick. Of course you have. I didn't shower my pants on. I'm not. Yeah, but I'm trying to remember. Well, don't remember I've it. Don't dwell on it. Don't go lot, too. I've seen a lot of dicks. I'm just trying we, to remember. We it. have, from, and we've seen, I've mean, gone off piste again here, but we've seen an inordinate amount of willies. More willies than you probably should see. Oh, I think you've, you're well kept, aren't you? You've yeah, shaved oh, yeah. more yeah, often yeah. than not. Sometimes it's described as the last chicken in the shop window. Oh. Yeah, no, decent. I think you've got a decent helmet on you as well, haven't you? I'm circumcised, if you're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's lovely. I'm yeah. remembering it now in my backlog of. Uh, and you've got a backlog. Backlog of dicks. Excellent. Where in the shower. There's also a backlog of guys that you know don't show don't show their dicks. Or don't shower. No, or do, there is a backlog, backlog of, of don't, don't shower. shower Stinky either. academy Stink, people who just stinky. move mud round themselves. Um, right, we've di- we've digressed fully. Have you got a chart? What, is that a dick chart? Is that not? It's not. It's not. A, what have you got there? Oh, this is odd. What, what are you examining here? Joe is reaching for a clipboard if you're listening. On yeah, the I was podcast. just looking at uh, if I'd forgotten to ask you anything. Oh, fine. Well, you can ask me something in the end. Do you, do you think, though, obviously you said about people needing to do more. Are you, uh, is it true you didn't know 
Tell me the truth. Yeah. Eyebrows, you didn't know Chloe was Chloe Maidley. I didn't know I Chloe was Chloe Maidley. Eyebrows? Eyebrows. And uh, does Richard dominate you in the kitchen? Yeah. Why? Because he gets very stressed when he's in the kitchen. And the first time I went in there, he said he was cooking a load of food. To honestly, he was, he was heating up M&S stuff, <laughs> which I don't think counts as cooking. Charlie, it, Charlie Bingham. Charlie Bingham. A <laughs> like, whole pile of Charlie Binghams, right? <laughs> And he came in and I said, can I help? And he said, no. And I went, come on, I'll help you, Richard. You need a bit of help. He went, fuck off. So does he alpha you in the kitchen? He alphas me in general. So you, you're probably not used to that, are you? Being you're, you're, you're the alpha in, me, mo, in fact, <laughs> pre, pretty much every room. <laughs> bar, but I think I'm quite kitchen. accepting of letting other alphas shine. Have but, you? Have you? Uh, do I let him shine? Yeah. Yeah, it's Richard Maidy. He does what the fuck he wants. Uh, is he an alpha as well? No, no. Oh. He is... Um, do you know what? He's one of the... He's kind of... He's, he's, a, a, he's a beta. No, he's not a beta. He's kind of an alpha because oh, he has he's a opinion. Charlie. Don't accuse him of that. Yeah. He's a delta. You're going as low no, as a delta. I think he's an omega. I think an omega. Oh, is... Fucking hell, you've dropped him. No, no, him no, right no. Down. I think oh, we had Paul and Lee on. No, um, no. Stinks of no, fish. No, he doesn't. Your um, father no, in law stinks shut of up. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's the quote. Cut, podcast, finish. No, uh, he's an omega because basically omegas let other al- alphas shine, but are also alphas themselves. And he is oh. like that. But he's also a great feminist. He's everything. He's really good. He's very clever and intelligent. But no, we don't have, there's not a big like, war cock off thing going on. He does sometimes get naked though. Like, unpa- like he, I came in the kitchen once and he just took his dressing gown off, put some trousers on. I, I saw his ass, and that was mildly inappropriate. I mean, I just don't think he gives a fuck. No, which I think I love, I respect. I mean, I've got no bum. I don't. For, for, I've got no proper bottom. Bottom. You know, bottom. Yeah, I don't have it. You know, like it's a bit of a shelf bum. Well, I wish I had better genetics. You've got quite a big dumper, haven't you? No, I haven't. Have you not? No, I've got a spotty dumper. Oh, God. Spotty, horrible spotty Right, dumper. we need to get back on task because I want yeah, to ask you co- co- last couple of questions. Fucking hurry up, would you? I've so, got to get a train. Sorry, sorry, sorry. On your pathway, you said, obviously that doctor, Harlequins, you reached out to and spoke yeah. spoke to. Do you think other people, do you upset that other people didn't spot what was going on or do you think there could have been more support for you throughout that career or just the fact you didn't open up, it didn't happen? No, I, d- I don't view it that like that at all. Uh, that I was I wasn't let down at, at all or whatsoever by any of the environments that I think there are there are people there there need to be more people but in terms of teammates and recognizing team the more we talk about it the more tools are actually put in place to actually help other teammates and recognize the signals like you spoke about with Kin and like you 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 looked inside yourself and were like, fuck, what could I have done more? Mm. How could I have recognised it more? Like, we need to be better at that. So um, with the constant check-ins, regular check-ins for, for boys that do struggle, but also not not just the boys that struggle, but just the w- well-being of the, the group in general. Do you, do you think that a lot, a lot of the um, psychologists I see in team sport are just on the periphery, mm. not really included because the coach mm. isn't interested, he never used them, mm. and they're sort of like an afterthought. You know, it's like, well, we should have one. Everyone's got one. We don't really use it. Mm. Do, do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. That, that's, that's probably bang on that a psychologist it tends to come in to talk about oh, quick buzzwords on the pitch to stop giving away penalties <laughs> or something like Joe, that. Joe, stop it. <laughs> Mainly. <laughs> yeah. we're gonna, our buzzword is Joe. Joe, yeah. Whenever yeah, you hear Joe, it means yeah. stop with the penalties. But um, no, I think we're, we're at Quinn's, we're looking to explore a little bit more um, in terms of a psychologist or not I don't think they're calling themselves a psychologist it's probably a guru you know what they always throw around now but more in terms of communication um, expert Craig White was it Craig White came in for yes, a bit. I, I interviewed I him for think... this. He was oh, amazing. Did you? Oh my god! Brilliant. Bloke. What 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 Absolutely a journey! Absolutely brilliant bloke. Um, little rum bugger. <laughs> I remember him doing a, a a Zoom class with a couple of us. Um, and he was living with his mum at the time during the pandemic at the start. Um, and she, co- it's that classic. She comes in the door, this little office. He comes in the door, and then he quick. You see him quickly mute the <laughs> the Zoom call, and he's like, "Mum, would you fuck <laughs> off?" Like, thing. And then she looks, at, sees him on the screen. This little old lady. She's like, "Oh yeah, you're right." And he's like, "Fucking guess out, would you?" And he's what? He's fifty. Year- he's a fifty year old bloke. He's gone back to help his mum out. And he's like, oh, panic. But and he comes back and he's like, sorry, guys, can we just get back to the communication thing? Like, <laughs> like, Love that. And we're like, oh, can we laugh at you? Anyway, um, I think de- getting someone in to delve more deeper in terms of communication, the ability to 
give feedback and more importantly, particularly with our group, is receive feedback and not take it personally. I'm not calling your mum a twat. Yes. Understand that. I'm not here going, your mum is a twat. If you if I do do that... You haven't met her, so you can't... Re- well, yeah. Fair, but if I do do that, <laughs> yeah. by all accounts, you've got permission to punch me yeah. or j- just punch me. Like I'm not. What I'm saying is... Uh, I don't think you should do this because it's not making us better or uh, you know, I'm not yeah, being agreed. personal with it. Yeah. Unless, of course, I've gone, you're really shit at this and you're fucking ugly yes. as well. Then I am being yeah. personal. Yeah. But, and, you know, you're not going to... But sp- particularly with people coming through, generations coming through, not generalising, but I am generalising, yeah. uh, they've got to be better at taking feedback. And that's on and off the field as well. That that helps with if you've communications of checking in and recognizing whether people are in a good spot or not in a good not in a good spot. That changes how things happen on the field, on the training field, and off the field. So, um, yeah, psychologists are good, but they need to be there to do. We more. need to be given the players need to be given more tools, and, more everyone, tools. and the whole environment needs to be geared around to. If you've got a happy team, player welfare, spotting these things, taking accountability and doing everything you've said to make... Because mm. I think uh, I, what I don't understand is, and I said it in What Flanker, the book was that... Is that your book? Yeah. It is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that was, the name of this podcast? It, it is, yeah. What yeah, Flanker yeah. podcast as well. Yes, cool. Um, it, is if, is if, if, if we actually focused on these things, the team would be better and better on the field. Mm. If I told you, you know, you were going to run faster by buying these trainers or get, uh, you know, get fitter, drinking a supplement, you do it. If I said to you, you can change the whole dynamic of everything, you just got to speak to someone about your emotions or how you're feeling. No one does it. Mm. Not one fucking person mm. does it. And, mm. and, and it only seems like now teams are grasping it. Because mm. I think most teams are level or as fit. And, and, as and like England are, are doing that. Yeah. They brought in someone uh, pre-World Cup. Um, to explore that more and bring in those tools and have that ability to do it quickly on the field and the conversations off the field and how how big those um, how tight those relationships become off the field because the communications levels are so much higher and the interest and in you know, of yeah. knowing each other more. Look, look at look, even now if we'd have known each other as we do now as we were playing, I'd have probably been less of a twat to you. <laughs> Or I'd have been more understanding of the fact that you couldn't catch a cold. <gasps> As if you ah! got there. <laughs> hey, we're good friends. Oh, yeah, That's getting cut out. There's, there's, <laughs> there's the little button that you press. <laughs> you went to my heart. Oh, good. It's fine. Um, I've got a last couple of questions. Just, you've, you've said that loads, mate. Sorry, honestly. sorry. I want to just know you, 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 you're... Well, first, actually, you know, you've got a docu- you're doing a documentary that's coming out on Sky. Boys Don't, boys don't May Cry. May the 8th. May the 8th. Big um, Boys Don't Cry. Big Boys Don't Cry. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Like, was that a great experience? Did you learn a lot from it? It was, or... um, it was unbelievable. It was um, a guy I met, a photographer I met back in 2015, who stitched me up doing a topless photo shoot. It wasn't one of those where I've, he's paid me 50 quid for a fat Just day. in his house. In like, his house. What publication is he <laughs> oh, going yeah. for? Um, um, yeah. Just my private collection. Yeah. Anyway, you might have done it. They, they painted a red cross on the chest. I did, yes. I yeah, did, yeah. Yes, so yeah. they went around and then photoshopped us all in. They didn't photoshop a fucking six-pack on me. No. They? Fine. A lot of red paint as well to cover that whole cell. Yeah, I, yeah. I had quite a nice thing when you look like somebody done a modern... <laughs> you're like a Damien <laughs> just Hurst. Head, just head to toe. <laughs> um, and uh, so his name was Grey. His name's Grey Hughes. And we, we'd kept in contact in passing at various different shoots. And then... Once I'd retired in 2018, he'd then got back in contact with me. He'd become a, a director for RSA, Ridley Scott Academy. Um, and he was doing bits and bobs of different adverts and films that he'd, he'd put together. Um, and he'd come up with this idea. He said, look, I'd love to do a project with you going to Japan and trying out all these different Japanese things whilst out there, and Rugby World Cup, stuff like that. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Let's explore that. We met up a couple of times. But he was also someone that I um, confided in with some of my mental health issues. Really? Yeah. And what random bloke did you choose? Exactly. And it was because there was a sense of dark recognising dark. And he then opened up to me in some of the troubles that he'd had growing oh, up. Wow. And, and it was quite a big moment. I remember sitting in this little garden. <laughs> I remember sitting in this garden centre um, with him having a cup of coffee and just, we were like, what the fuck? Where's this gone? Well, how's it's this? like you're living in some alternate reality. It was, it was yeah. like, well, how's this happen? And, yeah. um, you know, we start talking about it and then uh, we start coming up with an idea of of doing this thing in, in Japan and just spitballing some ideas. And then we also explored 
the mental health side of things because we were both passionate about maybe making something like that. And then next thing I was, I text him saying, uh, sorry, mate, we're going to have to put the project on hold. I've come out of retirement and I'm going to go give it another crack. And he was like, what the fuck? Where's <laughs> this come from? And I said, look, in all fairness, mate, it's, a lot of it is to do with you and the conversations we've had of opening up more and dealing with it and giving it another crack. So we did that. He said, brilliant, fuck, where's my next project then? I was just using and abusing you. No, thank you. Um, and then after the World Cup, we decided that we were going to put together something um, around mental health. And I, we've been doing that for the last, I'd say, eight months. Um, and it's been brilliant because I've met loads of different people. A Welsh choir. Some SAS. No, PTSD. no. Some ex SAS guy took me up a mountain in Snowdonia, who's like a life guru, but also uses nature and stuff like that. And immediately I was like, "Fuck off, mate! Right. I ain't doing good." Open minded. Exactly, therapy, exactly. I was like, mate. even still, I'm like, I ain't doing this hippie shit. What's a mountain gonna teach me? Like, I mean, like, what a fuck off! I'm not doing it. But I. A you mountain taught you something. You open up a little bit, you listen to it, and you, you, you experience that, and you go, fucking hell, this is brilliant. Like, this is another thing. I met an, another random lady called Vivian who does uh, cold water swimming, or uh, she does open water swimming, sorry. And I was like, okay, well, this is. A, I don't like heights, and you've taken me to the top of a mountain with some SAS bloke who could It's got PTSD. Yeah, He's like just, shaking yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I don't like heights. I, and B, I can't swim. And now you're taking me to this ice cold lake in the middle of fucking Snowdonia that I could die in. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, have I got a wet suit to do it? And they're like, no, no. What? Pardon? No, you just do it in your pants. We'll give you some gloves. I went, oh. Do you have to bring your own pants? Cheers. <laughs> <There's a play. laughs> Cheers. Was my own pants, like short, but uh, small budget. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, her, that was her little bit of light that she uses to to stay on top of her mental health. And um, why? Because nothing could be as bad as freezing your ass <laughs> in a fucking lake. Is that? I love that approach. Yeah, there was oh, I'm that. having a really bad day. I know. Was... I'll get in my pants and go in a fucking lake, <laughs> and then everything else will seem better. Is that the mentality? Well, I've always you made that up. You, you you seem so open to these things, Shane. I am You're really open. I am. Yeah. Um, but no, there's also there's a couple of other bit. There's this place I went to called um, the Big House in. Um, north london and that was incredible it's in it uh it's for kids that are just coming out of care or adults that are coming out of care 19 year olds um that go to this acting school it's not an acting school but it's where they base all their learning around acting skills and giving them the tools to go back to their homes and come out of care and actually live good lives but also giving them tools to go on and become actors a lot of them got done a lot in um what's it called that fucking adult adulthood yeah um top boy kid adulthood kid adulthood loads yeah. of different projects coming through and uh to meet them and hear their stories was brilliant I, I, I loved it mate got to meet loads of different people and hopefully um it will give a little insight into promoting talking more did you did you feel it? Did you feel like it that it resonated with you, or, or did, you know, did you see like a common common theme across it for yourself and them? Obviously, albeit their things were slightly different. Their things were slightly different. The common theme for me was um, being being brave enough to open up and and try different things, personally thing, but and experience put getting yourself out of the com out of your comfort zone will, will help you grow. Um, even to the point where oh, it's making me feel sick. Oh, excellent. Oh, when I met um, a choir. Oh, oh. I said about the Welsh choir. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't a Welsh was one. It, not? it was a London one. And it was a, a choir. And they gave me a sit in this. I had a one on one singing lesson. Uh, uh, do you know <laughs> what? I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have I can't sing. No, so I can't. But you did Adele on Jonathan Ross. Yeah, but it's different. It's different to hamming it up and like oh, yeah. you know, playing the part. Hello, darling. Well, I can't even ham it Hello, up. My voice darkness, is that bad. my old friend. <laughs> so I started with that, and uh, oh. so the choir mistress Nikki, she uh, she was giving me a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> lesson. Was she? Oh my god, was she? no, a one-on-one -on -one lesson. Oh, okay, and I was like, what? She was like, no, stop. Hamming it up. Hamming it up. I want you to try and sing. I went, I can't fucking sing. No, no. I went, no, I'm not having it. She's trying to make me sing. Give me a sing. I was like, oh. But actually, the ah! 
Actually, uh, it's so sick. Now. I might be that. This uh, might be the most awkward yeah, thing awful. I've ever heard of. Oh god. And then I do sing. That's <laughs> fucking <laughs> <laughs> me mad. I remember finishing it. I finished it, and I FaceTimed Daisy straight after. She said, "How's filming going?" I was like. Oh. Uh, it's kind of made me feel a bit sick. She went, what have you been doing there? I said, oh, I've just uh, done some singing with the thing. She said, oh, that was cool. I was like, yeah, no, it wasn't. She was like, why? I was like, I, uh, uh, I do a solo. Uh, she, she went, she put her hand on her face and she's shaking her head. I said, well, what? She's like, I'm not, I can't watch that. I'm not. She's, I said, what, the whole project? She said, no. If you're singing it, are you properly singing it? I went, yeah. I was like, give it a chance. I was like, ah. So we were both like, ah. And you know, well, that's going to be used front and center to market it. 100%. That, that, if anything, that's all people are going to see. Well, but even still, at least it would get people watching all the other bits. But is, 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 it, all, that, is it that bad, though? It, all jokes aside, but, yeah. all jokes aside, I was a little bit worried about it. But speaking to Gray and Josie and the people that worked on the project, and they were like, yeah, you've got every right to worry about it. You can't sing. You can't sing. And I said, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm yeah. worried about how bad it looks. Like, the thing, and they're like, no, no, you're not seeing it the way we see it. Yeah. We see it as you trying to be this big, like, macho, yeah, I can make people laugh and, you know, put on silly voice and sing, ya yeah, la la la. Yeah. To so then being not forced, but then having to let yourself go let your guard down. so yeah. let your guard down and it's a bit of a metaphor or a bit of yeah i get it i get to, it yeah. to actually being vulnerable and going oh fuck it i'll give it a go and see how it go and do you know what I mean? and that yeah. was it and I, I have to keep saying that to myself over and over yeah. to justify i mean it's a great thing it's like <laughs> i would say out of all the pr bullshit they've come up with they've wrapped that dog turd in in a bundle and have sealed it with a bow and gone this is what it's about but i'm yeah, I mean, I, I, the one thing I talked about a the therapy the therapist was, I was spoken to a therapist was about vulnerability. We don't let ourselves be vulnerable, and actually, sometimes that's one of the hardest things. And, I, and they're actually right, but it's still going to be awful because you sung. And hundred percent, it's still be awful. There's other ways of being vulnerable yeah, that there wouldn't is. have been, that won't be as cringeworthy as that. However, it was still good fun. <laughs> I, I've loved speaking to you, and I wanted to touch on how amazing Daisy is and stuff and all that kind of stuff, but I won't. I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, no, because I don't. Want no, because to sit no, here because and lie. no, because we got no, because we got we've, we've got, got no time. Your time. No, we haven't. Oh, You've well, got last nine two minutes. questions. Can you hurry up? Right. If anyone's um, what, what what things would you spot? Sorry, I'll start again. What signs can you spot in people you think are struggling? What would you look at? Should look out for? Um, the the distance is a big one when when someone who's usually part of the group or not even like the the loud outgoing ones. But, you know, that you often see around the group uh, that then start distancing themselves a little bit more. They're quieter than usual. Um, they're the ones to to probe a little bit. You ask a couple of times, how are you doing? How's things going? Everything all right? You know, and, and not just accepting, yeah, I'm fine. But not but not then turning around going, no, I, no, you're not fine. Tell me tell me all the truth. But Because you know, then they'll shut down even more. But just being a little, every, maybe a bit more different questioning of how's the family or what did you get up to last night or and start start thinking about hang on a minute no, not everything's right here i mean a, a, a teammate of mine he messaged um saying uh mate i've been in a bit of a dark spot and my wife sent me your article that I did in the mail about about mental health and it really resonated with me and I've now reached out and gone and got help um, on such and such medication um, and th and thank you for, for reaching. And now we have regular everything all right, mate? How's things going and stuff like that? So for me, that that's the easiest one to spot where people start distancing themselves. Um, well, I, I would have spotted that with you, but you've always lived miles away. <laughs> I wanted to ask you that because you're you're an extrovert, ambivert, moody as fuck, up and down, and you've always fucked off to, to where it is miles away. I won't say where you live, but yeah. I mean, I couldn't work out your distance because you've always distanced yourself. <laughs> and if I lived as far as you as you did, I'd be crying in the car every day. <laughs> maybe I've read this. I think you've I've read, read the this whole wrong. thing wrong. Maybe maybe it's not depression. It's the fact I can't handle the M25 traffic. Yeah, because you live yeah, about two hours really away got, from where you're supposed yeah, to be it's every not, day. It's, it's, it's approximately seventy-one miles. Mate, mad. Um, what piece of advice, the last question, would you give to someone who is having problems? What do you think they should do? It, it's hard because I didn't get into this or open up thinking 
I know everything about mental health and all how to resolve things or every everyone's different aren't they I'm not an expert in any of it I'm still not an expert in it I just know things that work for me and stuff like that but um having having the courage to actually open up and and to the people closest to you understand that you're not going to be a burden what's the point in having a partner um if you're not there to support each other or a best other, friend or, or a best yeah. friend or 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 your family that's close to you. what's the point in having them if you're not talking and relying on each one another it's not a case of here's all my shit i'm dumping it on you help me help me help me it's a case of 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 two way or three way of I don't know what sort of relationship I mean I mean <laughs> in, in in your support of your friends <laughs> you're always giving me the eyes I didn't I'm give you the eyes I said three way and you immediately went oh well, three way is it oh, okay. um, yeah into those parties are you anyway, <laughs> not anymore no fair come a long way from those good days. yeah and uh, what's the point in that if you don't if you're not there to to share those experiences um, both the dark and and the good so don't be afraid to to open up to the people closest to you because as as we said earlier on with the Roman Kemp uh, documentary highlighted it, that it's suicide's the biggest killer, killer in men under 40 and what, what, how, how can we stop that? Well, we can stop that by encouraging men to talk about their stuff that is getting them down um, and open up and, and giving them the tools to do that. So that's really shit advice and I've no idea where that went. I just blacked out. So it's <laughs> that was good advice. Mate, listen, yeah. um, Joe, amazing. Thank you so much. If people want to find your book, where can they get it? Uh, in, in most charity shops now. Okay, um, excellent. The, signed the, by you. In the night of uh, bin. Because you, uh, in fact, I've still got some of yours that I need to do something with. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, probably. What do you mean? Yeah, probably. I have. What? How do you know what I've got? Because you right? told me. I think you've told me. We've oh, stitched no. me. I, th- I just. You're I'm not right. going to stitch. How can I possibly compete with you, James? You fucking rocketed through the roofs, and and d- d- deservedly so. Some of the stuff you've written is complete horseshit, but it's fucking. Oh, funny. and you come on my podcast, try and sabotage it. it. No, I'm sabotage. Have I? No, I've, in the last bit. In the yeah, yeah, part. it's complete horseshit, but it's fucking Thank good, you, funny Thank horseshit. You. So, um, and what about this the documentary Eighth of May? Documentary, Big, Big Boys, Boys Don't, Don't Cry on Sky. And if people um, want to follow you on social media and get more of Joe Marler. At Joe Marler on Twitter or at Joe Marler17 on Instagram. Excellent. Like don't even know the original name. No, so, don't actually have the original name. And uh, obviously my podcast that doesn't rival uh, What a Flanker, where um, we talk to... I mean, it's easy for you, isn't it? Because you've got all your celeb mates you can call up. I haven't got any celeb mates. No, but you talk to some amazing people. I, I really like your podcast. Yeah, but I haven't got any you celeb mates. You told us about the tattooist, Nick. tattoo lady. That was that was. No, I liked the marine biologist we had on. Really? Oh, fucking hell! He came loaded. You liked the astronaut, didn't you? Huh? Yeah, Tim Peake yeah. was good, but like, there's some of the they're normal people with these sort of jobs that you think, oh, they're just everyday jobs, or and you delve into a little bit you ask the right questions and they fucking come alive and you're like oh my god it's fascinating and and to be fair it actually, it's actually helped me a lot in trying to understand people more and and i like talking to him so amazing um, yeah the joe marla show that i didn't want to be called the joe marla show but i didn't have a choice in that yeah well i like it and it's a very good podcast joe you've been excellent thank you so much for coming on <laughs> There's nothing more you want to ask me. There's, there's, there's nothing more you want to ask me, is there? Got your little notepad, anything you want to ask me? Do you want me to write some? Uh, no, no, just uh, one question quickly, lastly, because you've got to go. Something you wanted to know. You've made so many extensive notes. I haven't. I don't know why you made it, why you armed yourself in case I was rude or something. You just wanted to be able to take me down. No, I haven't. I was, oh. I was, there was just a couple of little reminders. How's your mate Roman Kemp? Did you watch the thingy? Then yeah. we asked that. Um, how do you do your mental health, your own mental yeah, health I'm since up. you retired and stuff? Yeah, it's been like up that. and you down. Struggled? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. But you've you've done quite a lot, haven't you? I so have. Like... But I think that was a reaction to maybe not addressing stuff like a bit like a shark. Uh, Sharks not swimming, it dies. I was just like, yeah, I'll fill every single space until. Is I... that true? Yeah. Are you sure? What do you mean? If a shark stops swimming, it yeah, dies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? How? If a shark stops swimming, it dies because because the water has to pass over its gills for it to breathe. If you stopped it, it does no water pass over it, so it can't breathe. Did you know? Is that true? Yeah. I'm going to have to ask my marine biologist friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you know if you stroke a shark, sh- yeah, sharks the, aren't... On nose, it's, t- it'll, it's a sensitive, it's nerve endings on a nose. If you stroke it, it's on a touch on its nose, it can it stops it, shocks it. So this is the issue that I have. You didn't let me finish and that's not what I was oh, going to say. Oh, sorry. Well, I've let you finish the whole fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you stroke a shark, like normally, like a cat from head to tail, you'd shred your hands you'd cut your hands open 
But if you stroke it from tail to head, it's soft. I didn't know that. But the other way, it's all these like sharp little blades. Can't imagine a lot of people stroking sharks, though. It's a good piece of knowledge. Much more if it was like a cat. If I got stroking a cat wrong and lost my hand, I could understand that. It's more of a practical thing. James, I'd like to thank you for having me as a guest on your fabulous podcast. And uh, it's been wonderful seeing you. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Well, guys, that was What Flank of the Podcast uh, Series 2 with the legend that is Joe Marler. If you want to subscribe, then please do. You can get it, get it sort of all your regular podcasting places. And remember, it's a YouTube show. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram and pick up a copy of my book, What a Flanker, as it's in paperback now. 